I've officially left Canon for Sony, and I'm never going back. Okay, maybe eventually, who knows, but not anytime soon. Now, I really wanna start with this. I never wanted to leave Canon. I've used them for almost six years. I've owned three different Canon bodies myself, over 10 lenses. This is not something I took lightly. All I ask is that you stay till the end of this video because I learned a lot through this process and what really matters to me in a camera. And while I love my Sony, it isn't perfect. Real quick though, I did wanna let you all know that I just launched a brand new YouTube channel. This is a place where I really wanna work on my storytelling, sharing some of the personal challenges in my life, adventures I've gone on, and so forth. If any of my YouTube videos have brought you value over the years, I'd really appreciate it if you checked it out. Link in the description, but seriously, no pressure. All right, so back to cameras. If you didn't know, I've been shooting on a Canon EOS R for about two and a half years. And I loved it during that time, but I got to the point where I was no longer satisfied with its video capabilities. Basically, shooting an 8-bit C-Log was always a little too noisy for me. The dynamic range in C-Log, while good, definitely wasn't great compared to more modern cameras. And lastly, 4K only went up to 30 frames per second, and it had a pretty massive 1.7 times crop. And as a videographer and content creator, it was time for me to upgrade. Now, the natural progression for me was gonna be to upgrade to the Canon R6 Mark II, and to be honest, that's what I thought I was gonna do. That was the plan. But the more I looked into that camera, the more I began to question that decision. This was a huge purchase for me, and before buying anything that expensive, I wanted to check out what else was on the market. I spent months looking at what was available, and for my needs, I'd narrowed it down to the Canon R6 Mark II, but also the Sony a7 IV. In terms of photography, I would've just stuck with the R6 Mark II. It's a pretty dang close race and nothing was gonna sway me to trade all my gear in for Sony. But when it came to video features, that's where things got tricky. Now, there were a ton of minor features in the bodies, the ports, the settings. None of that really was gonna sway me either direction. So I really wanna talk about just the big features that mattered to me. From what I learned, the Canon had a better body with nicer ergonomics. It had better rolling shutter performance. Uh, I liked the menus and was familiar with them. And it could shoot in 4K 60 frames per second with no crop. The Sony a7 IV does have a 1.5 times crop shooting in 4K 60. Now, my understanding was the Sony had better low light. You could really crank that ISO. It had better dynamic range by about one and a half stops when shooting in a log profile. And it could make internal proxies, which was actually a really cool feature for me. Both these cameras have pretty tough codecs to edit. And even if your computer can handle it, you know, you add color correction, effects, text, and graphics, a lot of the time it starts to get choppy. So being able to just toggle to proxies without having to stop editing and render them out was actually pretty cool. But none of that was enough to make me switch brands. I mean, that's kind of a process. Here's what really killed me. At the time of making my decision, which was a few months ago, Canon was not allowing third-party lens support. This is a pretty big deal. No matter how you slice it, Canon RF lenses are crazy expensive. And not having cheaper alternatives from Tamron or Sigma it sucks. Personally, I think brands like Sigma and Tamron make the best value lenses on the market. Normally, they're only a little bit behind in performance, but they're significantly cheaper. For instance, the wide angle Canon RF 15 to 35 2.8 is currently going for $2,200, while something like a Tamron 17 to 28 f 2.8, which is not available for Canon, is about $800. Yeah, it's objectively worse. You're losing a couple millimeters in each direction and stabilization, but it's like a third the price and it's smaller and lighter. It's literally the size of a 12 ounce can. So I actually ended up buying that Tamron 17 to 28. I got a Sigma 28 to 72.8, and I also got a Sigma 35 millimeter 1.4, which I'm filming on now. And all of those together were under $2,200. Granted, I did buy them used. 
my budget went so much further with Sony. And obviously if I did wanna buy the nicer, expensive Sony lenses, I could still do that. And to be fair, you can use the older EF lenses on the R6 Mark II, but you have to get the adapter, they're a little bit bulkier, and pretty much all of them make this kind of ticking autofocus noise, which kind of ruins on-camera audio with a lot of those lenses. But the final nail in the coffin for me was that dreaded Canon IBIS wobble. If you don't know, the newer Canon cameras that finally got IBIS have this horrendous, warpy, wobbly stuff in the corners when shooting on wider lenses, and in my opinion, it's totally unacceptable. I think the reason it bothers me so much is it's supposed to be like a premium feature. It's in their most expensive mirrorless cameras. And honestly, when it messes up, I would be embarrassed to use that footage. This is one of the features you want in a pro camera, but then it doesn't work, so you disable it, and then your footage is just shaky. Meanwhile, on Sony cameras, it just works. A lot of the things that drew me to Canon years ago, like the flip screen, the better color science, the better autofocus, the better battery life, don't matter anymore. Everyone else caught up. This is the most expensive camera I've ever purchased, and when looking at something that I wanna use for the next three to five years, I believed and still believe that the Sony was gonna help me make the best videos possible with the highest quality image, for cheaper than the alternatives. All that being said, I do have some gripes with Sony. The camera's not perfect. First off, holding the camera is like holding a brick. The ergonomics are so much worse. First couple times I used it, it felt like the back corner was digging into like this meaty palm area. A couple months later and I don't notice it anymore, maybe my hand just figured out a better way to hold it, but it's worth mentioning. Next, coming from Canon, the Sony menus are atrocious. Finding things at first was a nightmare. It took hours of fiddling to get comfortable enough to know where everything is and change it on the fly. I still don't think it's a huge deal because it's just a learning curve and in time you'll get used to it. But if this was my first camera ever, it would be a little more complicated to get used to it. Lastly, I can't ignore it. The 1.5 times crop shooting in 4K 60, not 4K 30, not 4K 24, but in 4K 60, it's a reality. When filming other people, I kind of like it to be honest. You don't have to be so in their face. You can step back a little bit farther. But if you shoot anything wide like real estate or maybe you want to vlog in 60 FPS and get slow motion, it's going to be pretty tight. The easy solution to that though is you just buy a wide angle crop sensor lens and you'll get that field of view back and that would effectively solve it for most people. Hopefully my story helped you learn a little bit more about making a camera decision. As always, cameras across brands in essentially the same budget, you're just being nitpicky. They're all good, they're all great these days. What matters is actually going out and making stuff. That'll always make a way bigger difference than the logo on your camera.